L640 was a light reconnaissance tank used by the Italian Regio Esercito, or Royal Army, from May 1941 until the surrender to the Allied forces in September 1943. It was the only turret-equipped light tank of the Italian army and was used on all fronts in which Italy participated. Its obsolescence as soon as it entered service was not its only inadequacy. The L640 was developed as a light reconnaissance vehicle to be used on the mountainous roads of northern Italy, and instead it was used in North Africa and the Soviet steppes as a vehicle to support Italian infantry attacks across the wide, flat spaces. Operational security is paramount in war, as so many armies have found out the hard way over the years. Nonetheless, personal security is also vital, and this is where today's sponsor Aura can help. Anyone can find anything on the internet, including your full legal name, your personal email, your home address, your phone number, and more. This information is accessible because of data brokers who profit by selling your information to robocallers, telemarketers, spammers, and anyone else that wants to learn more about you. Aura will identify data brokers that are exposing your information and automatically submit opt-out requests on your behalf. They'll even opt you out of junk mail and telemarketing lists and monitor your emails and passwords to see if they were involved in a data breach and exposed on the dark web. Their app features a VPN, password manager, real-time credit and identity theft monitoring, internet parental controls, and malware protection. If you sign up right now using our link, aura.com forward slash tank, or by using the QR code on screen, they will give you a two-week free trial. You'll be shocked at how much of your private information is exposed over those two weeks. Let Aura do the hard work of keeping you safe online, and also support our channel while doing so. During the First World War, the Italian Royal Army fought the Austro-Hungarian Empire on Italy's northeastern border. This territory is mountainous and brought the trench fighting typical to that conflict to heights of over 2,000 meters. Following the experience of mountain combat between the 20s and 30s, the Italian army and two companies involved in the production of tanks, Ansaldo and Fiat, requested or designed only armored vehicles suitable for mountain combat. The L3 series of three-ton light tanks, the L640 itself, and the M1139 medium tank were small and lightweight vehicles suitable for this environment. During the Italian invasion of Ethiopia in 1935, the high command of the Italian Royal Army was not impressed with the performance of the L3 series light tanks, which were poorly armored and armed. The majority of the problems were due to an absence of rotating turret. This is why, in 1935, the Italian army put out a request for a new light tank equipped with powerful armament in a rotating turret. In late 1935, the first prototype of what would become the L640 was presented, the Assault Tank Model 1936. During the testing, the prototype, armed with a short barrel 37mm gun in a turret, did not impress the army and the prototype was then later modified. In April 1936, a new prototype was presented the Gun Tank Model 1936. It was armed with a 37mm gun in a casemate and two machine guns in a turret, and was also discarded as unsuitable. In late 1937, a private Ansaldo Fiat project for a new light tank was started. It was meant to be equipped with two machine guns and a rotating turret and received the prototype name M6, meaning 6-ton medium. It was presented in October 1939 to the Italian Royal Army, which suggested adopting a 20mm automatic cannon as the main armament instead of just two machine guns. This would have increased the anti-aircraft capabilities of the tank and at the same time allowed it to deal with other lightly armored vehicles, as the experience gained in the Spanish Civil War suggested. In a short time, the Italian manufacturers produced a prototype with a 20mm automatic cannon coupled with an 8mm coaxial machine gun. At the same time, the vehicle was renamed Carro Amato L640, L meaning light, 6 meaning its weight in tons, and 40 meaning 1940, the year it was adopted. On March 18, 1940, the Italian Royal Army ordered 583 L640s, 241 M1340s, and 176 AB armored cars. The first L6s were only delivered in May 1941. By the end of 1942, about 400 L640s had been produced, but not all of them were delivered. Before the armistice, 416 had been produced for the Italian army. Another 17 L6s were produced under German occupation from November 1943 to late 1944 for a grand total of 432. 
The L640 was a two-man light reconnaissance tank with a rotating turret in which the commander, or gunner, sat. On his right, in the hull, was the driver. The 6.8-ton tank was powered by a small petrol engine produced by SPA, the Fiat SPA Type 18 VT four-cylinder inline liquid-cooled engine with a maximum power of 68 horsepower at 2500 RPM. It gave a top speed on road of 42 km per hour or 26 miles per hour and 20 to 25 km per hour or about 13 miles per hour on rough terrain. Maximum armor was 40 millimeters for the turret front and driving port, 30 millimeters on the front of the casemate, and the rest of the vehicle was protected by 15 millimeter thick armor plates. All the armor plates were bolted to an internal frame. The main armament was the powerful 20mm Breda Automatic Cannon Model 1935. It was developed as an anti-aircraft gun, but thanks to its powerful 20mm cartridge shared with the Flak 30 and Flak 38, it was capable of dealing with armored cars and other light tanks. It transported a total of 312 rounds and 39 8-round clips. The cannon was coupled to an 8mm Breda Model 1938 medium machine gun. The machine gun had 65 24-round magazines for a total of 1,560 rounds. Each L640 light tank company was composed of a command platoon and five tank platoons, of which one was in reserve. The command platoon had three tanks while each tank platoon had five tanks. The first four L640s arrived in North Africa when the campaign was already ongoing in December 1941. They were assigned to a unit to trial them on the battlefield for the first time. The four L6s were assigned to a platoon of the 3rd Armored Group Nitsa. Between 52 and 85 L640s were assigned to 3rd L6 tank group that fought in the last actions of the Tobruk battle. It then followed the Italian Army and Africa Corps entering in Egypt and fought at El Adem and in the first battle of El Alamein, in which the majority of the L6s were lost. In October 1942, before the second battle of El Alamein, the unit had only five L640s left in battle condition. Despite heavy losses in North Africa, during which some of the reconnaissance companies equipped with L640s were assigned to Italian armored mechanized and infantry divisions, the L640 was also deployed in Europe. The Italian 1st Cavalry Regiment used the L640 to patrol the Italian and French southern coasts in order to prevent Allied landings. Different Italian units employed the L6 in the Balkans, where, for the first time, positive reports were made about this light tank. In the Balkans, the Yugoslavian partisans retreated after attacks into the hilly forest and mountainous areas in which heavier Axis vehicles could not be deployed. The light tank's armament was also praised, together with the armor, which was thick enough against the partisans who didn't have any anti-tank guns. In late August 1942, 58 L640s were sent to the Soviet Union to support the Italian troops fighting the Red Army. Its baptism of fire in the Soviet Union was successful, as nine L6s repelled a Soviet attack on the same day on which they arrived on the battlefront. This was not a significant result, and in fact, only a few days later, an L6 company lost 12 tanks out of its 13. Before the Soviet Southern counteroffensive in December 1942, the Italian army in the Soviet Union had 45 L6 tanks in service. But with the start of the Russian offensive, the number quickly decreased. On the 19th of December 1942, the Italian troops started their retreat, losing the last L6 on December 28th, 1942, just over a week later. In the Soviet Union, the L640 was demonstrated to be a completely useless tank. Its small tracks allowed it to bog down in Russian steppe mud or soft snow and its armor was vulnerable even to anti-tank rifles. After the Italian armistice on the 8th of September 1943, some L640s were deployed during the failed defense of Rome. Over a hundred of L6 tanks were captured in Italy, France, and the Balkans by German soldiers. Many German units that had previously lost part of their equipment received L6 light tanks to replace them. The captured vehicles were deployed in northern Italy and the Balkans by the Germans to fight the Italian and Yugoslavian partisans. In the anti-partisan role, the L640 again demonstrated to be adequate, even if by the end of the war the partisans began to be better equipped with anti-tank provisions. The Italian Social Republic, the Mussolini-led puppet state created in the Italian territories not yet freed by the Allies, 
used a small number of L640 for the same anti-partisan role. After the war, a small number of L640s that remained in Italy were deployed by the Italian police to prevent communist coups, while smaller numbers were deployed in the Yugoslavian army for training and during the Greek Civil War. The L640 light reconnaissance tank was probably one of the most unsuccessful vehicles used by the Italian army during the Second World War. While it offered a great improvement in armament and armor over the older L3 fast tank, by the time it was introduced into service, it was already obsolete in almost every regard. Its armor was too thin, and its 20mm gun was only useful in a reconnaissance role and against lightly armored targets. Against other tanks of the time, it was useless. Despite its obsolescence, it saw relatively wide use given the lack of anything better. Even when the Germans took over Italy, they regarded the L6 as an obsolete design, relegating it to secondary roles. So, what do you think? Should the Italians have ditched the L640 or upgraded it in some way? Is a shabby tank always better than no tank? Let us know in the comments. If you're not subscribed already, please be sure to do so, as there is much more exciting content coming soon. Thank you to all of our patrons for their support, and until next time, keep us in your sights.